So today we're going to be taking a look at the alternative future of the world part 2. So I released part 1 yesterday at the time of recording this and I'm hoping this one comes out today because I ain't got anything to do with nothing. You know, like might as well. So if you guys want to enjoy, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. We've just hit 60 subscribers at the time of recording this, which is which is amazing. It's absolutely brilliant. So make sure to subscribe. Our next big goal would probably be 100. And join my Discord server, link in the description and comments. Anyway, let's get right into it. So just a little recap of what happened last time. We had Russia invade Ukraine and Moldova and annex Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova. We had Kurdistan independence and Turkey take Syria. We had a war between India and Pakistan break out over Kashmir, which India won. We had North and we had North Yemen breaking away from Yemen, which now is a um, Saudi Arabian ally. North Yemen. We had Venezuela being invaded and taken little bits by <coughs> taken by Colombia, Guyana, and Brazil. And we had the Staff Confederation being formed. So yeah, that was that was for last time. And mainly, we're not really going to be focusing on, like, a certain region. We're just going to jump ahead in time periods. Also, I forgot, Irish got unified. Galicia gained independence. And Scotland gained independence. Anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing we see is an escalation of, sort of, tensions in this China Sea. And... I think in this time period, it'd be about 2026, even though it's probably going to happen a lot sooner. But we have some escalations, and that eventually leads to China, who is the big boy, going to war with the US. Now, we don't see any major sort of breakouts at all, or like any, we don't see like an entire world war break out. But we do see some sort of, you know, some good... We see some different sort of... I don't know how to explain it. We see... We don't see World War Three. We'll say that. We don't see World War Three. And I have said, I'll start editing these videos as soon as you get out to see all this. Anyway, so the first thing that happened is, obviously, it's going to be China goes to war with Taiwan. Because why wouldn't they? That's, that's what their goal is. So they go to war with Taiwan. And we also have South Korea um, and J Japan. I'm pretty sure this is. Oh, I think I own their islands. Now, I don't think Japan would be invaded. They just joined for the sake of it. So we have South Korea and Japan joining. And we have North Korea joining on, sort of, you know, we have North Korea joining on China's side. And then the final person to join is the US, obviously. So that is, that is everyone who's going to be joining this war. Let's jump into the war scenario. So the first thing we have is we have the North Koreans sort of <coughs> pushing down into the south and getting near Seoul, but they don't capture it easily enough. Seoul is like right here, so they sort of start to... <coughs> like surround it so um, I've got a bit of hay fever at the moment we'll get it a go. we see China la launches assault on Taiwan and they don't manage to capture the old island but they manage to capture a few bits of it and we have the US tr troops now arriving with the troops arriving they begin to push the North Koreans back up and even start a campaign into North Korea it goes extremely well as they move up the coast and towards China now moving up the coast, they push the Koreans back to they capitulate, and China sets up a defensive against them. Meanwhile, meanwhile in Taiwan, Taiwan is completely captured by Chinese, and they're now focusing all their troops on the Korean front line. With this, they begin to push back the US, but they can't do it too much, as they're stalemated instantly. The US now begin bombing across like all these areas of China, getting ready to basically invade. <coughs> Eventually, with the US a lot of power, they strike North Korea and manage to kick the Chinese out of it. We then see them cross over into China and up into the up into Manchuria or Manchuria. This would happen across like a year time span. This wouldn't happen in like a, a day. It'd happen across one year. 
anyway, let's get into it. Get back into it. So we see the Americans landing on Chinese soil in sort of near Beijing. I think Beijing is here, so and sort of near it. And the bombings that were taking place have begun to be turned into the landings. Now with this, they go. The Americans take over naval superiority and free Taiwan, and they begin to and they continue to push up through the Korean Peninsula into China. They're now threatening. They're now threatening Manchukuo, who's trying to break away, but China is holding up quiet still. So this is basically what's happening. <coughs> <coughs> we then see the Americans pushing more up south and near Beijing. Now Beijing's here. I actually I said it was here. But I think it's here. Anyway, the two sides begin to push down the coast, get towards Beijing. And Beijing is sort of surrounded, kind of. So, yeah. They begin to push down the coast to catch all the naval ports. And basically, Hong Kong gets independence. This island is captured, or kind of. And then they continue to push around the coast. Now, basically, the Americans own all the Chinese coasts. They're going to start bombing them heavily. So... The Americans and the Koreans continue to push up north and take a lot of Manchukuo. Like, a, a lot. By a lot, I mean a lot of Manchukuo. They literally own all of it pretty much now. And they're now basically threatening mainland China, even though China's probably going to break down in a minute soon because they've got, they don't, they've got countries that want independence, like, obviously, Tibet and Xinjiang, that and not. They are not good borders, but look, they're the two countries that want independence. <coughs> so it's probably not going to go well for China. Anyway, they continue to put the Allies continue to push through, and eventually Beijing is captured. With Beijing being captured, China, the Chinese lose all hope, and the Americans begin storming in from the south. They storm in enough, and eventually China just bleh, they break down. And why, how and why do they break down? Oh, I'll give you an explanation why. Bam. And. Bam. There you go. We've got Xinjiang and Tibet breaking away from China, which means China's just going to fall. I mean, they've got their really. They've just got dry land now. And eventually, after fist fighting, China just goes, you know what, peace, I'm out, and leaves and just surrenders. So we're going to be taking a look at the peace treaty now. <coughs> So, I think the peace treaty here, would be, um, let me just fix this. So I think the peace treaty wise, I think we could definitely see, we're definitely going to see Thai Bear and Xinjiang break away from China, finally. They're like thicker, they're not that slim. They like come out a bit more. There you go, that's actually quite good. No, that's too thick. I, I can't, I can never get Tibetan borders right. Do you like, we'll just go for this. We'll literally go for this. Just ignore the background noise, it's just a lawnmower. Someone mowing the grass, I think. So, yeah, I think that would be Tibetan borders. Well, even as that, before I mess it up even more. <coughs> <coughs> and then I think for Xinjiang, I think that's good. But then that's a bit too curly. I don't like that. I think, no, I don't like that either. Hmm. How are we going to do this? Do you know what that could actually do? Yeah, yeah, that's going to do. <coughs> so that's Tibet and Xinjiang broken away. Uh, we would say China is con now controlled by Taiwan, and now they're a Republic of China. Do you know what? We'll do that. Republic of China and South Korea, North Korea, unite. For now it's under South Korea. For Manchukuo, do I give them independence or do I not? Hmm. I'm really not sure because I don't think they'd be... A good country on their own. I mean, they could be invaded by Russia really easily. And then would the West want that to happen? Or would China? Do you know what? No, I'm going to leave them. Mate, you guys, I'm going to let you guys decide in the comments. 
Anyway, the second scenario I have, obviously, is going to be in the Middle East, where we see some sort of... Mm, we see some sort of wars breaking out a little bit. Oh, actually, no. Do I leave the Middle East? I'll leave the Middle East. I'll come back. So, in Europe, we actually see some sort of French-Belgium union happen, and Luxembourg also join in. This causes Amsterdam, and you probably know where I'm going with this. Yep. No, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. <coughs> so we actually see Catalonia and independence finally in 2027, which means Spain's a very sad country now. Now, we're actually going to take a look at the alliance map, because I hadn't really taken a look at that for a while. Well, I've never taken a look at that before. So the alliance map is probably something like i don't know <coughs> so maybe something like for these guys you obviously know that we have all these dudes here and montenegro all joined greece joined <coughs> <coughs> so I'm, very, I'm so sorry guys i got bad coughs there and then Turkey's in it. And we're actually going to see him form the World Defence Pact, the WDP. Now, I think this just makes the most sense. And, yeah, come on, it's the WDP. Now, for Kaliningrad, I'd always want to give them independence. But, mm, I mean, I guess they can have it. We'll give... We'll include Sweden and F Finland and Sweden. Because they're literally... There's, like, five countries left to accept their accession protocols, then they're done. So yeah, this is probably NATO. It, it, it's kind of ugly, not going to lie. It is, it's kind of ugly. There's a lot of whites everywhere now. Don't, don't tell that racist, but there is a there is a lot of white. There's a lot of, like, blank countries. Like I mean, you know, you've got Catalonia, Galicia, Ireland, Scotland, you know. So then we actually see the CSTO, which... Doesn't really, I would say, expand. It just sort of. I mean, these are the country members I know of. Ah, uh, I don't know all the stands, so you just have to give me. It's obviously Russia, Armenia, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan or Tajikistan. Tajikistan, we'll go with that. So these are the members I'd say over in the CSCO. I actually see Turkmenistan join that. So. Activating this, we see Georgia now joins NATO to get away from... Oh, I've just realised I didn't colour Denmark in. To get away from Russia because they're literally in, the, in their country and Russia does said that. Now for Kurdistan, would they want to join the CSTO against Turkey? Because them two hate each other. But then they've got Iran and they don't like Iran and then they don't like... They don't like anyone. Kurdistan's really lonely. I mean, they could get invaded from anywhere. Mm. Yeah. Then we have some African alliance happen over here. We have some sort of new anti... Not really anti, but we have some sort of African NATO break down, break, in, break into action. And we have all these countries joining in it as well. So, yeah, we've got some sort of African NATO. We'll just probably take a look at something called like a Rio Pact or something. We have, obviously, we now have the PDO, which is the Pacific Defence. We have the PDP, actually. Let's do the PDP, the Pacific Pen, the Pacific Defence Pact. There you go. So, this is created, ultimately, by Japan to sort of counter China's aggression. But they're not really aggressive anymore, so... We don't do anything. So these are all the member states <coughs> of the Pacific Defence Pact. I'm actually going to include um, Thailand and Vietnam into it. So here's the PDP. They're quite strong. But then again, are they as strong as NATO? No, they're not. I mean, they've only they've got they've got two countries who have nukes. Probably three because Japan's probably got nukes at this point. I actually, no, because South Korea would have them as well. Yeah, I mean, any other alliances I could do. I mean, we've got the East African Federation, 
they're just a federation on their own. I, could, I guess I could do some other alliance. We have the Rio Pact forming. Now, this forms to basically keep peace in the Americas. So it actually gets formed by Brazil. Well, not Brazil. Argentina. It wants to keep peace. They have Paraguay and Uruguay instantly putting in to join. And so does Bolivia. Colombia begin, starts the next country. So does Ecuador. Then we see Chile join, even though I don't think they like Argentina very much. Peru joins. Guyana joins. And Suriname join. We then see just Venezuela and... Um... Brazil left, and they just they just joined for the sake of it. Now, I mean, if you're looking at this map, the Rio Pact, and then there's only one country that isn't in it, which is French Guiana, who are in NATO. I mean, I don't I don't think they should get a pen independence straight away, because that that just should be kind of boring. But anyway, let's take a at our next scenario because we've just been waffling on about alliances so far. Yeah, so we'll take a look at our next scenario. So, yeah, I will start editing these videos so you guys don't have to watch all these. So, I think our next scenario, I think it'd be some sort of unification. So, we finally have Kosovo breaking away again from Serbia. They've already done that, but I think they'll break away again. And we have Lebanon joining Turkey. This just makes sense, I think. Don't get mad, people from Lebanon. It is, it is, it's, it's non-fictional. Um, then we would sort of see some sort of conflict going on down in Africa. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see some sort of Ethiopian conflict. So, if, it were, if we were going for an African conflict... It'd probably most likely be started by, you know, the good old Sudan, because then they start... No, I can't say that. <laughs> so, I'd say they wouldn't get involved. Or would they? They would get involved. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't. And these lot wouldn't either. <coughs> and then we'll just change the goal. Anyway, so yeah, so we have... The East African Federation and Ethiopia being some sort of, you know, duo. Now, they actually go against Sudan and Somaliland, who actually already has independence. Do they think, I think, do I join them? And yeah, they do. So now here's our war scenario. We're actually going to have Artreo and Bhutan, or Djibouti. I don't know why I call them Bhutan, Djibouti, aren't they? I swear their name's Djibouti. Let me know in the comments. We have these two joining on the red team. And we also have DR Congo joining on the blue team. And the Central African Republic on the red team. Because they just bought... I think they want a bit of land out of DR Congo. I mean, the, the, these sides are pretty even. I mean, in terms of power, blue team. In terms of countries, red team, I'd say. Well, actually, it's tied. No, in terms of countries, red team. Right, let's take a look at this scenario. The first thing we see is the Somalian troops crossing over and basically reinvading Somaliland. They actually cross over and invade Ethiopia. But the East African Federation's already had troops there and they just steamroll through southern, southern Somalia. And they're a really weak country and just got guerrilla warfare going on everywhere. Basically, get steamrolled through, and Somalians get their troops ready, and Somalia just collapses in the first day. Djibouti is taken. If Altroia is weakened very heavily, and Sudan and the Central African Republic uh, have got their armies ready now. So they both start to push into South Sudan or the East African Federation, and they also both cross over into the into sort of Ethiopia. We see the Central African Republic invading part of um, the Congo, but the Congo have the upper hand and they take quite a lot, I would say this, they take quite a lot of um, the new, of Central African Republic. 
It forces them to retreat their troops and the front line is out across the border. This doesn't last long though, as they're still moving in the west and eventually Central African Republic looks like it's going to fall. But we have a turning point here. Oh, wow, that's not good. Egypt decides to sign up for the war and now it's going to take a big turning. So almost instantly with Egypt signing up to the war, we have the red team getting back into Central African Republic and pushing the DR Congos back. They also begin to keep invading South Sudan and eventually Central African Republic is returned. They invade DR Congo, but they I don't think they'd be able to weaken the centre of the East African Federation. Anyway, they can they t retake Altrea and Bhutan is retaken and they begin their invasion of Somaliland. So they've sort of used up a lot of manpower here and the blue team really haven't, they've really done what. So I think the blue team would win because, I mean, there's there's still quite a few of them and the red team used up all their power. But they decide to use even more because they're stupid. So they continue to push into DR Congo, not getting that far because they've got, they've got a long way to the capital yet. And they take Addis Ababa. They don't, they don't really expect this, but, I mean, they take the capital of Somaliland and Ethiopia and Somaliland falls all together and they're pushing in. But they began to lose in the west as the D as Congo and troops move up and basically make a huge spearhead and cut the country in half. They did it really quickly, which shows they're actually quite quick and talented fires. And eventually this causes this causes the east to collapse and the Central African Republic just goes bye bye. But now with them out of the war, the DR Congo is crossed back over and South Sudan is just getting reinvaded. But they cannot do a lot in Ethiopia, though, as they're basically going to fall in the minute. I mean, literally, they've lost most of their country. Somaliland is kind of liberated. They make their way down to sort of the north of... They make their way down the north of Somaliland, but then meet up the East African Federation, who absolutely destroys them and sends them screaming like little girls back to Somaliland. So, yeah, they've basically got destroyed. The Ethiopian group finally has a little bit of progress and pushes back the Sudans and Egyptians. The East African Federation is fully re-liberated and South Sudan is free again. And they begin to cross over into Sudan. Now Sudan living their worst nightmare, being invaded. So Ethiopia sort of starts to fall and they run up across the border. With this, they cut off their allies and all their resources, and they just fall one by one. Somaliland is taken back, fully, literally fully. Ethiopia sort of just gets rid of them on their own, and eventually all the troops surrender here. Now Sudan and Egypt are playing on the defensive. They're getting pushed in, pretty much, well I mean only Sudan is, but they're getting pushed in from all sides, pretty much. And Sudan looks like it's going to take an L. I mean, they've now reached Egypt, Egypt and Egypt on Egypt aren't really looking like they'd leave the war. But, I mean, they could do that. I mean, yeah, they've just lost the Suez Canal. They're going to have to leave. No, they don't. They lose their capital, Cairo and Alexandria. And they just go screw it and they leave. This then forces Sudan to leave. Yay, the war's over. That that actually lasted longer than I wanted it to. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have to take a look at the peace treaty. I don't know how long this video is. It's probably quite long. This might be the last thing we do. So, I think the peace treaty... <clears throat> would be something like South Sudan gets their borders extended or the East African Federation, we might say, get their borders extended. Like for, obviously, it's for Sudan losing land and they, this gets fixed because that is ugly as hell. We see Ethiopia getting Altria and Djibouti. That is such a 
I tell you, Josh mentions Djibouti all the time. And oh my god, he just he makes it he makes a joke out of it. And I just think, how old are you? You three. But yeah. And then Somaliland gets Somaliland gets their full independence and also gets a lot more of Somalia. They get about this much. So now they're they're huge. And the rest actually goes over to Ethiopia because the, the country already can't survive on its own. I mean, why? how could they want more? And Ethiopia gets a tiny bit of coast. With more coastal access. Just because they don't really... They think they ain't got enough. That is ugly. That's not happening. And we also have Ethiopia getting a little bit more Sudan. <coughs> so now Sudan's sort of taking a bullet. Egypt hasn't. They just lost a lot of their army. But these are nearly borders of Africa. Ugly? Kind of. I mean, Ethiopia is very ugly. Oh, Lord. That is very ugly. I've ruined Ethiopia now. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, video. This might have been an extra long one. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe. Uh, we're aiming for 100 subscribers and 50 members in our Discord server. So make sure to join that. And I'll see you guys next time.